Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to strength train for rugby. Okay, so if you're a rugby athlete, rugby league, rugby union, um, and you want to go to the gym, you want to get stronger, even if you're a parent and you want your son or daughter to start going to the gym to get better at rugby, I'm going to show you how to do it, how to do it really effectively, and you know what things you need to consider. Okay, so consider this a guide to help you get started in the gym because that's what I want. I want you to get stronger, better, and faster so you go out and play your best rugby you can, make the highest teams possible. And all my content's about that, so you know if you like that, please like and subscribe to my channel. That will really help me out. Um, and yeah, share it to people. <laughs> share it to people, you know, that helps you grow too. Okay, so I've got seven steps for us. Okay, so if you can hang in for these seven steps, then you're gonna know how to start training. Okay, now, number one, and this is probably the biggest one that people get wrong is because um, they think to themselves, oh, you know, they can actually train more than what they possibly can. And so that means they don't make the best possible program because they actually don't train enough or they train too much, either one. So number one, how much can you actually train during the week? So that is going to be our biggest determiner of what happens because, you know, if you can only train twice, three times a week, then we need to optimize it so that you get the absolute best results for this, okay? Say you can train seven times a week and you think you just go to the gym all seven days a week, then you may think that you, you're outworking everyone else, but like probably three of those days, you ain't actually getting anything from that. So why would you do that then? You know, like that's that, and that's a big thing, you know, like rugby players seem to think that they can train like bodybuilders and go and get on steroids and like get the same results. It's not true at all, not true. Um, you know, unless you're taking the steroids that the bodybuilders are, don't do their programs. So, number one, how much can you realize that train? You need to work that out, okay? Even if it's one day a week, one day a week, you can get so much from that. People seem to realize that with strength training, if you do one day a week, man, you can, you can get strong. I promise you that. Just ask me how. Now, number two is, this is the big one. What is going to help you the most out in the field, okay? So you personally, what's going to help you? Are you a small player that needs to put on size, okay, and strength, okay? So, like, if you're small, like I was a small uh, number seven, okay, um, I relied on getting really strong and really technical, okay? And that's what helped me play first grade over here in the shoot shield. And I probably shouldn't have <laughs> seen I'm so short at all. 176 centimeters, and I played at 85 kilos or 88 kilos in there. Um, I'm roughly that weight now, but I'm a bit leaner, a bit more muscular, I'm a bit older, 31 now. Anyway. So what's going to help you the most? Is it fitness? Are you just a really big, strong dude? And I've played with guys like this that they just couldn't run, okay? And they couldn't get around the field, okay? It's like if, they, if you just can continue going to the gym, is that really going to help you the most? Um, and I say, like, yes, keep going to the gym, but, like, maybe you need to actually focus more on your running and having a running program. That's actually going to probably help you the most, okay? And so that's why now, okay, what is actually going to help you the most? Um, and it doesn't matter what position you play, you've got to think individual right now, what's going to help you? Is it strength, speed, fitness, size? Is it all of them? Okay, is it all of them? Do you need all of those? And that's fine too, because you can get that. You can definitely get that. Do you need to lose weight? All right, are you, are you carrying too much fat? All right, because then if, it's, if that's the problem, then that's a simple fix too, because that's seriously just your diet. Are you, if you want to lose fat, I can make you lose fat super quickly just by changing your diet, and that's it. You don't even have to work out. But, you know, working out helps. So that's number two. And so this is where number one and two sort of start to join together. Okay, so now, say you can only work out two days a week, and you go, oh, okay, I, I need to lose some fat. Um, well, how are you going to do it? Um, and you need to be fitter. Okay, like maybe you're already quite strong, like you're a big fella, and like you're already quite strong. So how are you going to do that? Well, this is what I would do. If that was the case, I would be fixing your diet. And then number two, I would be going to the gym. I would still work on my strength tra training. Um, I would do that once a week, all right? I would do that once a week where you work on your strength. And at the end of the session, this is the key, you do your cardio at the end. All right? And you do 10 to 20 minutes of cardio at the end of each session, all right? That you do. And say then you had one more day that you could train, I would do a complete running session down at the park and retraining how you actually sprint, how you run. Um, so you start to actually run pr uh, properly and then we can start building up your volume of running as we're gonna really help you out in the field. 
okay? But say you could do four um, four sessions a week in the gym and you wanted to put on some size, you know, you want to get stronger, fitter, and faster. Then I would do four sessions. I would split them up to upper and lower sessions. So you do two uppers and two lowers. Within that, um, it within that you would also do your conditioning at the end of the sessions okay so yeah once again we're going how much can you actually train okay what if you could train seven days a week all right so there's some kids are out there you know they really want to get in so they want to go professional um seven days a week i was like that too going to the gym seven days a week probably isn't going to be your best uh option you're better off doing either three or four days maybe five like fifth is like you're pushing the recovery, all right? You're really pushing the recovery. You're, you're, you're actually better off doing less and then getting the recovery in so that you can lift heavier next week um, rather than to keep pushing yourself. Because like rest is what's going to allow you to lift heavy. And lifting heavy is what's going to get you strong and, and it's going to help you put on size. And I can explain that more later on. Okay, so if, and then, so like if you did four days in the gym, like say you can trade seven, say so four days in the gym, then you have three more days. Okay, well, what can you do? You can obviously work on your speed work. Okay, so you can go to the park and actually work on sprint technique. Okay, then you can work on other skills while you're there. You, know, you can work on things like uh, are you a kicker, working on your kicking, working on your passing, working on your jackling, working on your tackling. All right, these are big parts of rugby which you, most people don't drill. Okay, and if you just set up these things to drill them and you drill them into you, you're gonna be such a better rugby player. And I guarantee that, especially around tackling. Like, as rugby players, we don't really get the opportunity just to drill, drill, drill tackling. All right, and if you get to do that, you're going to be such a beast of a tackler that like you know teams are going to want you. <laughs> They're going to want you on your team if you're just whacking people all the time. People are scared of running you at the ball. That's that's tackling, man. Like you just got to get good at tackling. Okay, what else do we have? So there are that's our top two. All right, if we get those two things right. You are, you know, you're already on the path to playing much, much better footy next season. All right, what else do we have? Number three is, okay, so once we've got those two down, right, once you're starting to write out your program, okay, so like, what are you going to be doing? Now, this is how I like to program, and what's my number one is I go to, okay, what are the biggest injuries someone is most likely to get on the rugby field? Okay, and if we break it down, here's the biggest three because I know because I've worked in it for so long and um, you know I've wanted to try and reduce injuries as much as I could. So we've got knees, hamstrings, shoulders, concussions, and then probably followed by ankles after that. So well, how can we start to work on these things? Okay, so like let's look at concussions first. Okay, so like there's a whole bunch of research around concussions and the amateur, so like the actual size of your neck, the strength of your neck, and reducing concussion. Okay, so obviously we need to have some neck work in there, okay? And that's gonna go along with your drilling of tackling to help reduce concussions, because most of the concussions actually the tackler, not the tackle the person getting tackled, the tackler getting concussed. Okay, so there's ways we can reduce concussions there. Then number two, how can we reduce hamstrings? Okay, well then, when you actually need to train the hamstrings in its different functions, okay? So it helps with hip extension and knee flexion, okay? So, what? Well, um, and a lot of people will tear their ham hamstrings taking off and slowing down, okay? So we need to train these aspects of the hamstrings to help reduce those injuries. And in doing so, when you train the hamstrings that way, you actually will reduce the amount of, uh, the chances of an ACL injury or like, you know, worse knee injuries, okay? No, it's not, it's not foolproof, but it definitely will reduce chances of that. And, and like if you're playing rugby now, I'd be like, okay, well, let's reduce that chance. We don't want that. You know, you don't want to, you don't want to go through that. Um, and unfortunately, some people will go through that. Um, what else? How else can we uh, reduce injuries? Shoulders, okay? So shoulders are a big one. Um, you might be able to see my AC here is not pretty, but my AC sort of sticks up a long, long way. And it's it's just not it's not a nice one it's a really hard one to actually reduce injury because like the shoulder is just not meant to take that force there and there's two ways you can sort of get an ac injury and that's where you run into someone or that's where like you your shoulder pops up and you, your arm hits the floor i've done both um <clears throat> so yeah they're not nice but i would suggest to you 
um, that if you build up the shoulders, okay, so like how do we build the shoulders? So you want to build, the shoulder is a funny joint, right? So it, it's got all these ranges of movement, right? It's got all these different ways that it can move. So we actually need to train in all these different ways. Um, so external rotation is going to be good. Um, doing some sort of rotation work is usually uh, good. That's just light work on that. Um, just getting the internal rotators strong is obviously going to help a lot. So like a lot of people bag out bench press, but like if your chest is strong, it's actually going to help give some protection to the shoulder. So having a strong chest and having a good range of motion in the chest, I find is beneficial for the shoulders. Um, so we actually do a lot of stuff to stretch out those, the chest and the shoulders and things like that. Um, single arm work really is good for the shoulders and stability work where you're holding something above your head and walking can be quite good for the shoulders. We do a lot of that too. Um, I think that that's actually really quite helpful. And what are we missing? Shoulders. Yeah. So shoulders, hamstrings, knees, they're our big ones. So we need them in our programs. Um, generally I have them, I have the hamstring stuff as like our main lifts, but like other stuff like the shoulder stuff will usually be an accessory. I do it at the start of the session. I, I like to get a lot of the accessory work done at the start of the session while you're warming up. Um, nervous system's getting used to it. And when you've warmed up the accessory exercises, usually you can go into your big lifts and like you just feel ready to go. <coughs> um, that's along with uh, warming up with those lifts as well. Um, but I also do sometimes put it at the end of the session. It just depends. Really does just depend. Um, okay, so once we know what areas okay we need covered, we also then want to go to testing. We want to test different lifts um, or uh, metrics to know that our programming is working and that, that you know, um, okay, well, what, what do we want to get up? Okay, and the general ones I like to test uh, is your bench press, your squat, your chin up. And when I say squat, I mean the squat. Like if you watch my clients squat, um, you'll see how they actually squat. Everyone gets all the way down. I teach people how to get all the way down. Um, yeah, it's a real deal squat, but we're not squatting for powerlifting, we're squatting for performance. And I think you need to be strong in a full range of motion through um, <coughs> your legs. So testing, um, I like to, I, you know, if I have someone, when I used to have people in person, I would test their broad jump. It's pretty hard to do it online, so I don't usually chuck it in. But I love to see if your broad jump's going up. So if you want to do that extra, do your broad jump, see how far you can jump. Um, really interesting one if you can get that up. And then um, another one, tough one to time, but like your 20 meter sprint, if you can time that, that's a really good one to see if you're getting more explosive on the mark. And it'll only be small increments, but those small increments make a big, big difference out in the field. Um, <coughs> so yeah, testing. Right, once we've got those testing metrics, okay, so chin up, bench press, uh, squat, um, and then power clean as well, Mr. Power Clean. So power clean also, um, that's going to show us how strong and much how much faster you're moving something. Okay, so it's um, really it's a it's it's a good one to see how well you can actually use your strength. Okay, and a lot of people will say to me, oh, you know, like you can't teach it very fast, but like we've got time. Everyone's got so much time. Like um, I don't usually work with someone for like four weeks. I usually work with someone for six six months to a year plus. Like I, I look, I'm looking at the long term. How can I build someone up? over the next five years. So in five years time, they are just absolute weapons because good things take time. And anyone that tries to sell you that, like you can get amazing results in the short term, which you, you can get results in the short term. I do get awesome results in the short term, but like the guys that stay with me for, for you know, three to five years, oh man, they are weapons. And that's the way you should be thinking. Like I want you to think long term. How can I think about this long term? Because um, yeah, the long term, the longer term you think about the, these results, your gains, um, yeah, man, like the, the better you'll become. And if you're like 15, 16, 17, 18, in that bracket there, 20 even, man, you have so much time. You don't realize yet, but you have so much time. So much time to become great. And I know guys that made rugby late, like 27 years old, they made it to professional. Um, so, you know, you have time. Just play the long game. Anyway, exercise selection. Okay, so like, now you've done your testing, what exercises are we gonna start off in your first phase? And I like phases to go for about three weeks, okay? So like one program will last three to four weeks and then we change it, okay? So we don't get that plateau, all right? So that's the big thing, we don't wanna get a plateau, so we wanna change that program after about four weeks. And it doesn't have to be big changes, honestly. You can, you can even run the same exercises if you want and you can change your rep and set schemes. 
okay? And that will get, be enough stimulus to change so you, you're not getting that plateau. Now, <clears throat> so exercise selection. Now, this is a big one, okay? Because what you want to do with your exercise selection, so when you're picking out exercises, um, certain exercises will train parts of the muscles differently, okay? So they'll actually hypertrophize muscles at different points of where the uh, most stimulus is going to. Let's, let's put it that way. So where the most stimulus is going to is going to train that part of the muscle, okay? So if you're actually doing bench press and expecting yourself to get a big chest and strong chest muscles, it's actually going to train the shoulders and triceps probably a bit more. Unless you're doing a really wide grip, you're actually going to get, yeah, a lot of deltoids and, and a lot of, um, yeah, tricep development compared to <laughs> the chest development, all right? Even if you're, like, I like to go mid-grip as well because it's, it's, it's a bit more sport-related, but, um, yeah, it's a lot of shoulders and a lot of um, triceps, okay? So if you actually want to train the pecs more, then something like a fly or something out wide um, would be uh, better. So, like, that's why my programs usually at start, we do a bit of um, flies, actually, and people are like, oh, well, that's not functional. It's not actually about it being functional. It's actually about developing where we want to develop, okay? So if we want stronger pecs, then we actually want to do more flies, so we actually hit the pecs more. It's not just about it, okay? So exercise selection. So try and go for your big exercises first. So I always like to think, okay, compound lifts, let's get our compound lifts in, and what accessories do we want to do that's going to help us in the long run? And I like to change the accessories more than I would change the compound lifts, okay? So accessories are things like what you do for your shoulders, like your face pulls, external rotations, uh, and just hitting different parts of your shoulders and things like that in your core work. So like one month we might be doing farmer's carries, <coughs> and then we might be progressing it to a single arm farmer's carry or um, a carry above um, the head, lots of different types of carries. So like they're the accessories that will be changing the most compared to our big lifts like our squats. Uh, RDL, so Romanian deadlifts, are a big one for our hamstrings. Um, yeah, so where was I going with that? Um, yeah, so with that, you need to start thinking, okay, how many days a week am I training? Okay, which ones are the most important to me? All right, so that's what I want you to think about. Which ones are the most important to you? So if you've got two days a week, then I would probably do two full body days, and I would try and get um, one lift to hit your front of your upper body, your back of your upper body, um, and then your front of your front of your legs. So like a squat, um, we'll hit glutes too, and then like maybe a hamstring curl as well. And I'd run that twice a week. I'd probably run that for about two to three weeks, and then I'll change. Ex I would change rep and sets, and I'll slightly change exercises so you hit slight. Um, so you hit different parts of that muscle. So say like you're doing an RDL is different to a um, Nordic curl or a hamstring curl where you're going to hit, where it's going to hypertrophize. And what you essentially want is all of your muscles to get strong, right? The whole muscle to get strong. Okay, so like, say like you're training biceps, I'm going to step away here. If you have your hand like this, right, it changes the stimulus to if I have my hand like this. All right, it's not just it's about being weaker, but it's where it actually gets you strong. Okay, and the whole point of your strength training for rugby, because it's rugby, okay, and you're out there and it's not specific, anything's gonna happen, you need to be strong everywhere. Because you have no idea what position you're gonna get put into, how you're gonna have to tackle someone, um, it's all gonna change, like it, it, it's constantly changing. And so that means you have to be strong everywhere, every part of your body needs to be strong. Okay, and so that's what we wanna to aim to do and that's why we have different phases where we're going to get different parts of the muscles strong. Okay, and obviously then we'll have our still our main ones where we're trying to get up, like our squat, bench press, uh, chin up, and our power clean. Our power clean will go up when our squats go up, by the way. Um, and we teach you how to get your power clean good. All right, so that's our exercise selection. Then we got our sets and reps. <coughs> now, if you've been following me for a while, you know I like low repetitions for our main lifts. And when I say main um, low repetitions, it, most people would say under eight, but I usually go six. I usually don't go above six for my main lifts, okay? And this is going to actually help with hypertrophy and you training more than if you do high reps. So the more high reps you get, you do, the more muscle breakdown, okay? It doesn't mean that one's better or, or not. 
what it means is that <clears throat> if like you know, you can get results, uh, you can get results with both um, high reps and low reps. But low reps, you can get the same results as high reps, okay? But you're not going to get the same amount of fatigue, which means that you should be able to train more often. Now, the only time I do high reps is when I'm doing, uh, not training for strength or size, okay? Then I'm training for something like more like endurance, okay? Which is a little bit different. <clears throat> um, and my accessory exercises, yeah, they, they will usually be between 8 to 12, depending. And that's just so you get a good feeling of where you're trying to hit that accessory exercise. And, and I still do actually do some of my accessory exercises I do quite heavy as well. Okay, because I find heavy is better to uh, engage more motor units, okay, higher threshold motor units, okay, which is going to get us more hypertrophy with more strength and it means more power. Okay, and that is what we want. We want, that's essentially what we want. Okay, so what we generally want is 20 effective reps a workout. <coughs> Because we can recover from that usually twice a week. We can get recovered from that properly. Okay, when I say effective reps, if you're lifting your 5RM for five reps, you're getting five effective reps. If you're doing six reps, five of those reps, you'll get effective reps. If you're doing two reps at your 2RM, or just under, you're going to get two effective reps. If you're doing 10 reps, Right, and you're doing your 10 RM and your 10th rep, you're failing, you're still getting five effective reps. So you still have to do that four times. And you have to make sure that weight that you're, you're pretty much failing on your 10th for that to be a true weight. Okay, because <clears throat> those reps before your fifth or, or when you get to your last five are just pre fatiguing reps, is what that, what's that, uh, is, what that is called. Okay, so they are fatiguing you and your muscle fibers until you get to your high threshold motor units or your high threshold um, muscle fibers. Does that make sense? If that doesn't make sense, you feel free to message me. Okay, feel free to message you on that because it's quite a tough one to get your head around. Okay, but that is why I, I, I like low reps because like it just means we need to do less <clears throat> to get more, right? You don't need to do those high reps to get the hypertrophy plus the strength plus the power because it's all going to come the same one. Now, uh, I haven't touched on this uh, yet, but that is that is a lot to get your head around. So I like low reps. So like five by five, five sets of five is one of your go-to gun sets and rep schemes you can do. But like I said, three to four weeks of it, then change. Okay, then I like things like uh, 10 sets of two. I love 10 sets of two because like it means you can lift your heaviest, all right, and then your... Um, you can, yeah, you can be just doing your two RM for ten sets. I know, and it'll take a bit of time, but I love that. Um, it's such a good rep and set scheme. Right, even if you're a beginner, you're a girl, you can do these sets of rep schemes. Right, you're just not going to be able to lift this heavy. Right, as a beginner, I don't really recommend ten times two in your first month. I would say leave that to maybe your fourth, fifth, sixth month when you've got a bit more of a hang of it. With juniors, I actually go six to eight reps if they're doing starting in the gym. Um, that way, they get a chance to really adapt to an exercise and understand it um, without that, all that fatigue. And then as you get um, you know, more confident with the movements, because what happens when you're actually strength training is the first um, way you actually you know, start to get better in exercise. So like say you do an exercise one week, say you're doing bench press and it goes up um, one week. The way it actually goes up is um, your, your brain is actually making pathways um, to actually understand how to um, do like do that movement, okay? So like, it's coordination gains is what it is. It's coordination gains, okay? So that's that's the initial gains, and that doesn't matter if you're a beginner or you you know less you're not a beginner. Like those initial gains, always that new program, new movement is is that coordination. Who would have thought? Okay, and then once you've got your sets. I like longer rests, okay? And I'll usually pair up two exercises so the rest are still long, okay? But like you're still getting a bit more done. So I like three to four minutes rest minimum between an exercise. So if I do a bench press, then it'll be another four minutes before I do that bench press again. Okay, and that's just so I can lift heavy. 
If you lift heavy, all right, we're going to get the high threshold motor units, we're going to grow. Okay, you're going to get the strength results. And that is so necessary for someone that's not taking steroids. All right, that is that is so important. Like people that are taking steroids, they, they're, they're on a different playing field to you. So don't, don't follow it. All right, <coughs> then you need to be thinking about, hey, how am I going to progress this? You know, how am I going to progress this next phase? Okay, so if you're doing a power movement, so if you're doing like a squat into a jump, something like that with some contrast training, how do you progress that next phase? Are you going to go into a broad jump or a double jump or a, a uh, depth jump into another jump, you know? How are you going to progress these exercises? Now, there's a couple of different ways. Like you could do a different set of rep scheme. Like you, I like to go in between intensification and accumulation phases. So one lower um, lower set, uh, sorry, lower reps and then back to a higher rep for one. And I'll, and I'll juggle it that way. Or not juggle it, I'll, I'll change it that way and just keep building up someone um, into the next phases. So that's what I like to do. And then like I like to just progress the jumps. Okay, So I start with the easiest jumps and then we start to progress <clears throat> into the season. And then during the season, I actually take away jumps because you're going to be doing your rugby training on Tuesday, Thursdays or Monday, Wednesday, whenever you're training, plus your, um, a rugby. You know, There's going to be a, <clears throat> a lot of load going into your joints already. Okay, so you don't really need to do a lot of jumping to get faster during the season. Um, there is more to it. There is also with your exercise selection. Obviously, I like to like obviously move things slowly and heavy weights, but I also like to move things fast. Like I also like to add in some power movements. Um, not as much. Um, uh, you, people think you need to do a lot of power movements to be fast, but that's not true. Strength will make you fast. If you are strong, pound for pound, you will be fast. So I like to do like power cleans, um, but I actually don't like to teach a lot of power cleans early. What I like to do is break it down into the most simplest form of a clean shrug, okay? And everyone can learn that. And once again, like that's a really good movement to start off on before someone goes into, um, you know, doing a, a power clean. And like I said, I take time with people. Um, it takes time to build these things up. And, you know, <clears throat> I have a lot of people that start with me when they're, 16 and by the time they're 20 they're just absolute weapons like I, and i've got the results to show it so yeah take your time with it take your time build these things up um you know you can do your trap bar jumps with weight there's all sorts of variations you can do with that <clears throat> so with your rugby training i like to have that in there now some other things you should be thinking about too is mobility work like you don't want to be that stiff rugby player you don't want to you know not be able to move okay so if you can um, add in some mobility work into your um, programming. Find where you're tight. Okay, everyone knows sort of where they're tight. Work on it. And even if your lower back's tight, like you should be able to free that up. Um, your hips are tight. You should be able to free that up. It just takes a bit of time, a bit of work into those areas. Okay, so don't don't neglect um, that. Like even if you do a little bit in the morning, you wake up, you get out of bed, you stretch whatever is tight, and you just spend four minutes there. Four minutes, <clears throat> all right? I guarantee if you did that three times a week, you, you'll, you'll be mobile in that area within a month. You just gotta do the work, and that's simple as that. All right, so there are seven steps. Um, I know I've dragged this one on nearly for half an hour, but <clears throat> that's why my voice is starting to go. I get really excited. Um, if you want any help with this, please reach out to me on Instagram, message me, DM me. I'll get back to you. And if you want strength conditioning um, training, then please just hit me up. If you're off season, if you're in season, you know, I can make you stronger, fitter, faster, faster than you can get it. But like, I hope this guy really does help you if, if you just want to do it on your own. I get that too. Um, <clears throat> yeah, follow me on this and um, share it around. That'd be awesome.